Our first speaker is uh, Chris Treadwell. Um, Chris is presently the ADM, the Assistant Deputy Minister at the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development for the Anglophone section. Uh, prior to becoming an educator, he was experienced in, uh, as a foreman in a pulp mill. Uh, he has been a professional educator for 35 years, 31 of those as principal of schools at all levels in locations such as Grand Manan, uh, Keswick Valley, and Park Street Elementary School. He's also taught at Miramichi Valley High and North and South Esk Regional High School. He's taught graduate courses at UNB and presently is an adjunct professor of education at St. Thomas. Awards that he is proud of having are the Heartland High School recognition as one of 20 exemplary high schools in Canada by the Canadian Education Association and being given the honor of being selected as one of Canada's outstanding principals by the Canadian Association of Principals. Mr. Treadwell has a deep belief in the power of education to provide quality of life to the individual and to enhance the social and economic fabric of society. And he's delighted to be addressing you here today. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to be with you today to speak to your Sackville 2020 initiative, one that could help transform education in our province. I do not know many of you here personally, but I do know a lot about what you believe in through your Sackville Schools 2020 project, and I'm impressed. I'm pleased to be here to explain to you why I'm so inspired by your project and how it links to the government's 10-year education plan and the future of education in New Brunswick. First of all, Sackville 2020 is clearly a unique and compelling vision of how a town can impact the quality of education of its children. It unleashes the power of your community, providing the opportunity for everyone in the area to help educate children and to give them a better quality of life as a result. At the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development, we believe that education is everyone's business. You are modeling how that can happen. Your vision recognizes that in 2017, we can't still be using approaches to education that are, in some cases, hundreds of years old. Your vision represents the thinking of 21st century educators who stress collaboration, wraparound services, the central role of the community, and the critical importance of leveraging citizens to assist professional teachers. And you're not the only community to appreciate this. And I'm reading from a document called A Transformational Vision for Education in the United States. There is a growing hunger from education leaders, families, students, and communities for an entirely new way to educate children, for a reimagined way to foster thriving, highly engaged learners. They are seeking something transformational. Across the country, many communities and states are ready for a new vision and a fresh conversation. Sackville 2020 is certainly opening a dialogue of how education can be reimagined in New Brunswick. And so Sackville 2020 and the government's 10-year plan are in alignment in the following ways. Everyone at their best. Education is everyone's business. Ensuring that all learners value diversity and have a strong sense of belonging. Ensuring that all learners develop the knowledge, skills, and behaviors needed to continually adapt to and thrive in their environment. And fostering leadership, active citizenship, and an entrepreneurial mindset. These are all goals that Sackville 2020 is facilitating. This structure creates a greater sense of community among students. The older students can model positive behavior for the younger ones. They can mentor them and tutor them. It'll be wonderful to provide the opportunity for students in higher grades to gain leadership skills as they interact with their younger peers. Your preschool to postgraduate structure allows for the easy exchange of ideas, the strengthening of relationships for what will be an enhanced economic, or academic, pardon me, social and emotional learning environment. Sackville 2020 is empowering it allows the community to become master of its own education destiny. It will unleash the potential of the structural and human resources to create outcomes that we can't even foretell. Sackville 2020 is a model to others. All communities should be encouraged to break away from the status quo. What the end result will look like will be different for each community, 
as circumstances will require a slightly different approach. Still, your progressive vision, your belief in the power of your community, and willingness to create interdependence between your community resources and the public school system will encourage other communities to also reimagine what public education should look like. Your courage to be a pioneer is a powerful example of New Brunswick grit and can-do attitude. Your intent reminds me somewhat of the Harlem Children's Zone Initiative. The leader of the project, Jeffrey Canada, has the belief that communities need to be empowered to more effectively educate their children. He also used local resources to focus on education, to unite the local community to work together on behalf of the powerful purpose of giving children a better pathway to success in life. And he has been fantastically successful using an approach that I believe is not as creative and as powerful as yours. I can foresee future educational researchers descending on Sackville to write about Sackville 2020 in education journals. Of interest to you might be the research of why certain areas have in the past been incubators of genius and creativity such as Athens, Florence, Edinburgh, Vienna and Silicon Valley. It was not luck of genetics that so much brilliance came from these locations. It was because these sites facilitated the explosion of ideas. They valued learning and encouraged it. They addressed real life problems and had what we would call experiential learning. They experimented and were prepared to break, uh, break away from the status quo and the whole community valued learning. In Sackville 2020, your structure is designed to break down the barriers to ideas. It is a model for the free flow of learning. The potential for what could happen is in a, such an environment is tremendous. You can be the Athens or Florence of New Brunswick or maybe even the new educational Silicon Valley. And centers of creativity are magnets for talent. Businesses and people who are self-actualized by creativity and who want the best education possible for their children will be attracted to your community. Further building your reputation as location in which to live. We need more student-centered learning environments. We need to both tinker with our present structure and also unleash support for structures that create deep change, like Sackville 2020. Sometimes schools can stifle creativity. And I'm going to show you a short video from an esteemed educator yes, named... One kind of cod example would be, people might be asked to say, how many uses can you think of for a paperclip? clip? Well, those routine questions. Most people might come up with 10 or 15. People who are good at this might come up with 200. And they do that by saying, well, could the paperclip be 200 foot tall and be made out of foam rubber? You know, like, does it have to be a paperclip as we know it, Jim? You know. Um, now, they tested this, and they gave them to 1,500 people. This is in a book called Breakpoint and Beyond. And on the protocol of the test, if you scored above a certain level, you'd be considered to be a genius at divergent thinking. Okay? So, my question to you is, what percentage of the people tested, of the 1,500, scored at genius level for divergent thinking? Now, you need to know one more thing about them. These were kindergarten children. So, what do you think? What percentage at genius level? 80. 80, okay. 98 percent. Now, the thing about this was it was a longitudinal study. So they retested the same children five years later, aged of 8 to 10. What do you think? 50? They retested them again five years later, ages uh, 13 to 15. You can see a trend here, can't you? <laughs> now, this tells an interesting story, because you could have imagined it going the other way, couldn't you? You start off not being very good, but you get better as you get older. But this shows two things. One is, we all have this capacity, and two, it mostly deteriorates. Now, a lot of things have happened to these kids as they've grown up, a lot. But one of the most important things that happened to them, I'm convinced, is that by now, they've become educated. They, you know, they've spent ten years at school being told there's one answer, it's at the back. And don't look. And don't copy, because that's cheating. I mean, outside schools, that's called collaboration. You know, but <laughs> inside schools. Now, this isn't because teachers want it this way. It's just because it happens that way. Um, it's because it's in the gene pool of education. We have we to think personalize education, not standardize it. If we're going to standardize anything, it's standardizing excellence. 
We need to move towards a personalized education system in our province to bring out the best in every child. In my last school, we had a structure where we had it so the kids moved at their own pace in math and language arts, and we had kids in grade one taking math in grade five and, and beyond. Because grade levels are artificial structures. Who, who decided that a kid has to learn this much in grade two? If a kid can move, let him move. If a kid takes longer, then let him take longer. The issue is let's make sure that kids can move at a pace. So you differentiate in three ways. By learning styles, by academic readiness, and by interests. So we've got to find ways to make it so the schools do this, so that we have intrinsic motivation from children and not extrinsic motivation being do you pass tests. You know, can kids really say, I really believe in this? It's a purpose to this. It's experiential learning. I'm learning this chemistry and physics or this literacy because I want to make the world a better place. So these are things we have to take a look at. So I'm going to show you a couple of graphs from our own research as to what's happening in Brunswick schools. When kids are in grade four, 96% value of the income. And you so the time they're in grade 12, half the kids value was the income. The next slide. Interest and motivation. So by the time kids get to grade 12, actually, it's higher than grade 11 because I think it's at grade 12 bump. We're almost at this place, actually. And this is not unique to you. So we, we want to make sure that kids go to school, are interested, highly motivated, and learn because it's not just something they do or some of it. Because right now, they're kids are motivated to learn what's in front of them. Not that they're delaying gratification, learning this because they want marks to go to university, because they really value what's in front of them. That there's experiential learning and authentic learning and things that turn them on towards life and society, and they realize that this is important to learn. We need to do that in schools. But we're not beat yet. Here's a, let's take a look at this next one. This is a cool little video. I love this kid. He had more pillows last time. <laughs> There's a nice gate up that we paid a fortune for. What are you doing, Lacey? <gasps> what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my. Oh my God! <laughs> so you can see it's innate in children to be creative and even work together. Being in diapers and sitting and figuring out how to do something, it's very powerful stuff, it's innate, it's in them. We want to bring more out of that uh, kind of creativity in schools, not crush it. But let's take a look at what's happening in our schools in New Brunswick because there is creativity. This, this young man, he created a shoe for the visually impaired, and uh, I know the media is here, so I'm gonna have to it's alleged, okay, mm -hmm. this young man had a family member, I believe this to be true, who was carrying 
had visual impairment, and he went up and figured that she was going to be pleasing to the board. That's impressive. Next one, please. Okay, these guys are developing a startup called uh, Brain Power. The micro hydroelectric turbines capture energy from tap water to charge mobile devices. And these are kids in the basement, not in the air. That's cool, okay. And uh, next one. Okay, these are the kids. Uh, these guys are working to help um, MS to develop neck muscles and they created a product, a product with all this time. This is metal, actually, super big system. And this one is uh, developing a wearable technology that tracks heart rates and support of the heart and stroke foundation. And they seven kids. So, it's happening in New Brunswick because there are many great teachers that are actually world class teachers in our, in our province. The world class schools. What we'd like to do is to scale that up. So we go on a brand of that, but systemic excellence. Because it, it's there. And I was reading about a student in New England somewhere who, who discovered a uh, genetic marker for pancreatic cancer. I think he was 15. What if we started turning our students on to solving real life problems and saying, okay, there's local issues, anything for parking or water in the community, who knows what? And learning to solve real, real life problems potential is there, as opposed to just doing the, rant, the regular curriculum. Um, I do suggest that you remember new ideas are not always received with open arms. Educational progress requires people in a system to behave in new ways, to think differently, to spend money in new ways, and perhaps even work harder. Your initiative will require you to be determined to push against the status quo and the prevailing paradigm. But I believe in your inspiring vision. Your commitment to your idea, your organiza organizational skills, belief in your community, and strong leadership and persistence will help you prevail. I wish you all the best and I look for ways that we can collaborate on behalf of the children of your community as we reimagine together what a learning environment could look like. Thanks, everyone.